Um, hopefully I can type in now. Maybe somebody can tell me how to fix this once and for all, because uh, it seems to be random. That's why the background here. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, so as I said, uh, we're going to start talking about linear programming. We should get started. Um, and uh, so the plan is to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the the, me the you know the, the goal of optimizing. Um, um, optimization problems where, where the uh, objective function is linear and also the constraints are given by linear equalities or inequalities. That's, that's what linear programming is about. Um, and that sounds fairly easy except when you have a large size uh, problem, for instance, lots of variables and lots of constraints, um, you can run into um, well, first of all, by hand, it's it's totally out of the question when you have more than two or three variables. Um, and so, we'll talk about how this uh, implementation, how the algorithm called simplex method, um, you know, does find the optimal value in most cases. Uh, and then we'll uh, go to uh, an example and talk about, you know. Um, um, the, how the computer actually gets, um, uh, you know, becomes efficient in, in implementing the simplex method and getting the solution. So, first, and I, I, th I hope you've seen maybe, but if not, um, here's sort of a very simple um, setup. So, I'll start with the baby example, where you have to maximize. Um, say the function f of x1, x2, two variables, x1 plus 2, x2, subject to the constraints, <coughs> so I'm going to use g for the constraints, so g1 of x1, x2 is 2x1 plus 3x2, and this can, all, can be at most 6. And g2, x1, x2, is 3x1 plus x2. This can be at most 3. Okay. Um, and also, since most of our variables, you know, well, Sometimes, you know, we're going to uh, assume this, you know, without even uh, explicitly saying that the quantities are positive. So, this is a very simple example of linear programming, okay? You have objective function, which is a linear function in x1, x2, and your constraints are also linear. Now, these are inequalities rather than inequalities, right? But let's see what it... Um, looks like. So, first thing when we do an optimization with constraints, we want to look at what's the feasible region, right? What's the feasible set um, given by these constraints. And in two, ver in two dimensions, so when we have two variables, Linear inequalities lead to hmm? lines. lines and half planes, right? So, so the equality leads to a line, and then inequality leads to one of the two half planes, right? So, uh, let's see, two x one plus three x two equals six. Um, looks something like this. Uh, you can see this if I put x to 0, then I get x1 to be 3, right? If I put x1 to be 0, I got x2 equals 
um, 2, right? So that's 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 6. And so how do we determine which half plane uh, corresponds to an inequality less than or equal to? Right? Is this half plane or this half plane? Bottom one, because we could take take zero zero and verify that it actually satisfied the inequality. So, so it's the lower half plane for this first one, and the second one is um, going to be. If I use a different color, so the second one looks something like that, right? And I believe. There is a one intersect and there is a three intersect here, right? So obviously it's it's chosen so that it looks fairly simple. And again, is the lower half plane determined by that uh, half? Uh, yeah, half plane determined by that uh, blue line. So when you look at the constraints being satisfied uh, simultaneously, we get this region, right? Okay, so that would be the feasible region. So we're interested in the maximum value of this of our objective function within this region. Okay. Now let's remember. Um, well, first of all, you could. Um, identify all the vertices of this region. As I said, this is 0, 2. This is 1, 0. Yeah. Uh, this was 0, 0. And the last one is obtained by solving uh, the system 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 6. 3x1 plus x2 equals 3. Um, and I think after you do the whatever method you choose, it comes out to be 3 7th and 12 7 right? So that's of course this is going to be very uh, Part of, if not impossible, when you have seven constraints and five variables, right? But just to illustrate um, the idea here, so right now, um, how can we visually maximize this function, or can we tell where the maximum is going to occur? Well, first of all, look at this. Uh, objective function and think about what it is that like where are the points where this function takes a certain value C so what are the level curves right level curves of the objective functions of the objective function is or are uh, lines right lines in the plane parallel to themselves right <coughs> And you can figure out the slope, right? The slope is with slope. What's the slope? Negative a half, right? Because x2 is, you can write x2 is minus a half x1 plus a half c or something like that, right? So the slope is negative a half. So now I'm about to draw that and uh, in this plane, and I have to uh, make sure that I draw it correctly compared to these other two lines, right? So for instance, uh, let's do the 1 through 0. So the 1 through 0 is... x1 plus, uh, plus 2x... 2 equals 0. So it looks something like this, right? So this is where f is 0. Okay? 
Okay. Now, as I said, the other curves are, I mean, the, uh, the actual, le the other level curves, which are all lines parallel to themselves, um, are going to be either this way or that way, or, or the opposite way. But how do we know whether f is increasing or decreasing in this direction? So f is. What do you think? Is it increasing as we move this way or this way? As we as we move this way, it's going to be increasing because, well, because you can you can say uh, f equals two happens, you know. So x x one plus two x two equals two. Right happens when x two is. 0 and x1 is 2, so that's okay, so it happens when uh, whatever, you know, you can find the uh, intercept, right? So this would be 2, 0, and this would be 0, 1, right? But actually, a better way to, to think about it is, what is the gradient of f? It's 1 and 2, right? So the gradient of f is <coughs> this vector. And what do we know about the um, direction of the gradient? It's the direction in which f increases, right? Most, actually. So, so it's in the direction of, of the gradient that uh, f is increasing, right? So if you want to look for the maximum of the values of f, then we want to basically uh, see what level curve I can draw that still intersects that feasible set, right? And that corresponds to the maximum value of f. Well, maximum value of f correspond, uh, uh, is achieved the you know by by sliding this line sort of parallel to itself you know as much as possible right and still meeting that uh, feasible region right so so visually um, to maximize f of x one x two on the feasible set. Um, amounts to sliding the um, level or finding the level curve finding the level curve um, which intersects the feasible set And corresponds to uh, the maximum value of, of f. F equals c. Okay. So you can imagine doing this, and because of our the specific way the feasible set looks like, um, where do you think is going to hit? Where is that level set going to be? So it all depends on the um, the slopes, right? It depends on the slopes of this line compared to the slopes of the constraints, right? Uh, if you look at the slopes of the green line, then you see the slope is negative. Two thirds. Right, and this one has slope. So this was three x one plus x two equals six equals three. This is slope negative three. Right. So basically, if you compare the slopes, so what was negative two thirds, negative three, right, 
and you have to uh, see where the negative one half fits. Is it negative one half? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, negative a half looks like it's here, isn't it? Hmm? So, uh, right, this looks like right, so. Yep, so, so you see the slope, I mean the picture doesn't uh, look very uh, correct because I have 1 and 2, so this means that when I'm going to hit 2 and 4, right, that line is going to be with slope less than the, the, green, the green line, right? So this means that you can slide it up all the way to where this value is achieved, right? Right? So this means that the maximum occurs when um, x1 and x2 is 0 and 2. And the maximum will be The maximum of f, max of f is over the region, feasible region, let's call it s, is f at 0, 2 is 4, right? I mean, it's 0 plus, plus 2 times 2, so that's 4. Um, okay? And you can verify this by um, the following reason, right? So, so the conclusion visually is that you have this maximum. Yeah. Which one? This? Well, it won't have the same. Well, these have predetermined pre, pre slopes, so this has a uh, slope of a negative a half, right? And that has already that has a slope of negative two thirds, right? So, th so it will, well, it will intersect. And the question is, the question is, when does it intersect this this feasible set and achieve its maximum value, right? So, by by looking at the slopes, we kind of conclude that the maximum is going to occur uh, when, I'm just going to draw this here, so, right, so that's going to be f equals 4, right? Now, you can verify this, so for instance, what's the value of f at the other, at the other vertex, at this vertex? Well, the other vertex was um, 3 sevenths and 12 sevenths, right? So this is, uh, what is this, 3 sevenths plus 2 times 12 sevenths, that's 27 over 7. That's just slightly less than 4, right? But it is less than 4. Okay, 
So the value here is f is whatever, 27 over 7, right? So this is the maximum point. Okay? And it's achieved at the vertex rather than in the middle of, of, a, of, a, of an edge. And that's something that's uh, going to happen for all um, linear programming problems like this. Because the objective function is linear, right? Uh, the worst thing that it can happen is that that objective function could be parallel to one of the sides of this feasible sets. In which case, you'd have a maximum anywhere on that on that edge. But for certain, it's going to happen when uh, you pick only the vertices. Okay. So, so that's kind of one way to, to do it. And it's not very efficient when you uh, think about, you know, going to three variables and more because we don't even talk about slopes there. Um, what would be another way of, of finding the maximum? Well, it could be as easy as looking at the vertices only and evaluate the function of the vertices. Like we did this kind of a priori, but uh, a posteriori after the fact, right? We uh, computed the value of f here. We computed the value of f here. We didn't compute the value of f here, but here would have been uh, 1, right? So the value here was 1. So obviously it was less than. And here it was 0. So, right? So, and then pick the maximum of all, right? Now what happens if you don't have uh, this uh, visual tool. So what happens when you have several variables? Okay, so let me um, formulate the problem. So the linear programming problem in general uh, says the following. Is that consider Uh, the objective function a linear function as follows f of x1 xn is basically a linear combination of x1 so fc1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus cn times xn And uh, and try to maximize it or minimize subject to the constraints um, and you can have any number of them so I'm going to use G1 of X1, Xn, which is, again, a linear function X1, Xn. So it's A11, X1 plus A1n, Xn, less than or equal than B1, G2, and so forth, right? So. G2 less than B2, and finally GM, so that's a possibly a different number of constraints than the number of variables. Okay, you can have one constraint, you can have uh, fewer constraints than the number of variables, you can have more constraints than the number of variables. Right? Even in two dimensions you could have three constraints, Yep, and so forth. Um, so a m one x one plus a m n x n less than or equal to b n and um,
again, keep this in, in mind that for our applications, there's going to be, a, if you want, an additional number of constraints. But we're going to treat this separately, right? We're going to treat them as special, you know, constraints. Now, if you, you can always make uh, like x1 being positive to be a constraint of that type, right? You could say minus x1 has to be less than or equal than zero, and that would be another g. Okay? But again, let's let's leave this um, separate, and you see the code is gonna uh, use them as you know in separate ways. So, um, okay. So, so just first to uh, to introduce this definition is that the feasible set corresponding to to uh, to such constraints uh, is called. A simplex, a simplex, and R n. So R n is the state space, right? You have n variables. So in R n. Uh, you have this region, which is basically, um, you know, is basically um, obtained by uh, taking each constraint and reducing that subspace, you know, that R n to half, half spaces, half spaces, and so, and so forth. So you can think of it as some some sort of a, like a diamond with lots of faces, okay, in R n. Um, so. Quite hard to uh, to plot it, but this doesn't do uh, justice here because this is in R n, right? But in the end, what's going to be is going to be a bunch of vertices, bunch of edges, right? Bunch of faces, a uh, bunch of faces of dimension two, dimension three, dimension so forth, up to dimension n minus one. Right, so in R3, in R2 it is easy. This this really is a picture of R2, right? Of a simplex in R2. But in R3, you already can have pyramids, all kinds of right um, of uh, of objects. So that's that is kind of generic name uh, for for such a for such a region. It's called a simplex. And the algorithm for for finding uh, the maximum for finding the optimal uh, value of optimal um, value of f is a vertex search. Um, is okay. Note that because the objective function is linear in Rn, what's the uh, level curve of a linear function? What's the level curve of a linear function? Okay. Hmm? It's a n minus one plane, if you want, right? So it's a kind of a hyperplane, if if you want. Think about R three, and then you have a linear function R three. Level curves are planes, right? And then in, in more dimensions is you know there's an analog. But um, when you have a like a diamond shape region, right? And you kind of sliding that plane uh, parallel to itself, and you're trying to see where it hits that um, kind of um, simplex first or last, right? If you want to minimize, you want to slide from lower values, right, until it hits it first, and then to find the maximum is where it hits last, right? Well, those intersections will always happen 
either on vertices or, as I said, on edges, right? But it's fair. It's it's uh, fair enough to say that the maximum will occur at one of the vert vertices. So note that the optimal value is always going to be achieved at a vertex. Now, it may not be an unique vertex, because as I said, if you if you have a face or, or an edge that is parallel to that hyperplane that you're sliding, you're going to hit it along the whole edge rather than just a single vertex. Right? But it's, it's enough to kind of say, well, if, I, if I'm able to evaluate that function at each vertex and, then, and, and find the maximum ver the ver vertex where the function takes the maximum value, then we're done, right? The only problem is you may have lots of vertices that you don't know how to calculate. Okay. So evaluating f at each vertex may not be feasible, be computationally feasible. Because there are too many, and in fact, you don't know what they are. I mean, it's Imagine you have five constraints in seven, dim in, in seven dimensions. Just to compute those vertices, all the vertices would be a huge task, right? And then knowing that the maximum only occurs on one or two vertices, we'll say, well, why, why do I have to compute all the vertices, right? Well, I'm only interested in that optimal, uh, optimal, optimal vertex. Right? So this vertex search, so it's basically, uh, so the idea of the simplex method is uh, start with an initial <coughs> vertex and move um, to neighboring ones, vertices, where the function uh, increases in value, if it is to maximize, or decreases in value if you have to minimize, right? So. Again, it's impossible to draw, but in more than two dimensions. But if it if it's something like this, let's say this is it's in two dimensions, but I have one, two, three, four, five uh, constraints, right? And let's say the maximum is occurring at this edge, at this vertex. Excuse me. Okay. Then the simplex would uh, would start somewhere. Would start, let's say. Typically, you start always at, well, you can pick uh, the point to start, but typically you start at the vertex that you know. You don't have to do any computation. You start at zero, and then you move to a neighboring vertex where the value of f increases, right? So probably, I mean, to get in, in, in the shortest amount of time or computations, uh, to the to the optimal, you should move to this vertex, right? And then from here, you'll move to the the next one will be maximum, right? Rather than moving to this one and then this one and then this one and this one, right? Okay. Now, um, there is an algorithm that actually is uh, indicating how to to choose the vertices, the vertices to move in the fastest way possible. So in the shortest number of iterations to get to a maximum, right? Um, and there are actually different algorithms for, um, you know, 
some are actually professional grade, so some are, uh, I mean, there are, there are lots of them that are used in commercial products. Um, MATLAB has one that's called, well, has an implementation of the simplex method called linprog. So in MATLAB, this is the command linprog from linear programming. Um, command uh, uh, is is available as long as you have optimization toolbox. So we'll talk about that in a specific example, but just to. Um, indicate here. Of course, there's going to be some syntax that we need to uh, abide by. Um, but the main thing to do when you run something on your computer is to make sure that you have optimization toolbox. And I think the student versions recently have started that. So if you're not sure, just type VR from version and um, you should see it in your list of toolboxes. Okay. If you don't, you're not, going to, you're not going to be able to run this this command. Okay. But anywhere on campus, anywhere, as I said, um, if you have a very old student version, then you probably don't have this. But check it before you you start anything. Okay. So let me uh, talk a little bit about this. Any questions about? Now there's there's a curse and a blessing of having this uh, command available to us. Um, good thing about it is you can just if you know how to to feed in the the data. I mean the the the, da uh, the data of the problem in this command, then you get the answer. You get everything like in one line, right? Um, the bad thing is is well. May not be as bad, but you don't see actually that vertex search. It doesn't just show you any because um, uh, it's all sort of hidden in the command, right? So, in has anybody seen linear programming before? Simplex method in discrete math. In it was in discrete numerical computation. Okay. With the tableaus, yes, yeah. right? So, so you can do it by hand, right? Uh, but the point is, and I'll show you. I'll show you some of that. Uh, but it's not actually. Well, you see it by hand. Do it by hand. But then, when you have to do a large scale one, then you have to run a, a computer software. So, so this is uh, this is quite well optimized uh, in MATLAB. So. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how much you can rely on it, but um, there are different options to do it. And uh, hopefully, maybe Monday, I'll talk a little bit about the the, um, the algorithm by hand. But first of all, let's let's just um, see how it works on on a specific problem. So the example, I think it's called 3.3, or is it 3.4? 3.4. Uh, in our book, and it's it's about a farm. Problem. Okay, and it has three variables. So I think you should. Um, I'll kind of do it a little bit shorter than the book does because book actually goes through the five steps uh, of uh, modeling, so um, but I'll just, I'll sort of just highlight what are the, uh, the important ingredients in this model. So um, the problem is to, you have a certain amount of uh, land available for planting and you want to do three crops, corn, wheat, and, and oats. 
So you want to plan on how, how much of each to plant, say in a, in a given year. So the decision variables or the, the, the variables, the state variables are acres of corn planted or to be planted, uh, acres of wheat x2 and acres of oat. Okay. And now we have certain constraints. So we don't have, I mean, we have to stay within uh, certain bounds. One of them is the sum of the um, of the sum of the x1, x2, x3 has to be, you know, at most 600, whatever it is, 25, right? Well, just because the code, the way I wrote the code is, this is, comes as, as the last one, as the last constraint, but that's not, right? So this just says, I don't have, this is how much I have available. And yes. 625, I think, yeah. All right, now, what are the other constraints? Well, it is anticipated that a 1,000 acre foot of water will be available for irrigation. So you have a constraint on the total amount of water. Acre foot is volume, right? So it's, it's a... It's a it's an amount of water that's available, and I think that's my first cons the first constraint here. So, um, and then you have a table of how much water it takes each crop, right? So you have corn takes three acre foot, right? One acre of, of corn takes. So this is going to be three times x one, right? plus 1 times x2 plus 1.5 times x3 cannot exceed 1,000. Yep. This will determine the feasible set, right? Basically, what's, what's possible among, you know, we, st we still haven't defined what the uh, objective is, right? But the objective will be to uh, whatever, some profit, right? Maximum profit. Find the amount of each crop that should be planted for maximum profit. And profit is, is basically, yeah, is about, is, uh, is in terms of, of dollars of yield. Um, okay, and we have one more constraint, that's the labor. There will be farmers will be available to devote 300 hours per labor per week. So I guess um, it's safe to say uh, just do it per week, right? That would be time per week. So 0 0.8 x1 plus 0 0.2 x2 plus 0 0.3 x3 at most 300. Okay? So. That's about it. And of course, x1, x2, x3 have to be positive. Right? You know, the objective function is uh, the profit or the total yield. So that's f equals 400x1 plus. 200x2 plus 250x3. And again, this is all given in a table. So, you know, it, it may take a little bit. I think in one of the homework problems that I assigned, you're also given a table. So you just have to be able to extract the information the right way from the table. Um, so, okay, so the first thing to realize is this is. This is exactly in the form that we had it earlier. 
uh, also called a standard form of linear programming in standard form. Uh, and it's also very kind of, well, it's, it's almost, um, it's prepared to uh, to apply uh, the uh, linprog command in MATLAB with only one small modification. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Um, but if you think about it, it's, what you have is you have an R3, you have three variables, right? You have you have the first octant, right? And then you have uh, some of this, each constraint corresponds to a half space, right? So I don't know. It's it's I don't know how you call that uh, that figure that you you cut the first octant in three with three planes. Um, you see, it's 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 pretty hard to even count the number of vertices, right? Let alone to actually find all the vertices. Um, and then this will be actually a plane, right? That's trying to hit that um, that. Uh, Simplex, okay. And we're trying to find where it hits. You know, what is uh, is that vertex, or maybe two vertices, or maybe a bunch of vertices. Okay. So by hand, it's it it it's kind of almost hopeless at this point, even with three variables. Um, so let's see the code. How uh, you would do this on the computer? So. Um, First of all, I just wrote this here, so you don't. All of this is is common, so there's nothing. Notice that even the function, I don't have to define uh, the function. It's just a comment, right? So so we know what it is. In fact, that's an important thing to mention: is uh, at this stage, we're not going to use any symbolic computation anymore. So we don't have to define x1, x2, x3 as symbolic. Period. Yeah. Uh, it just makes the display better when you when you publish. Um, if you look at the published version, you'll see this. I think it it just uh, itemizes them here. Okay, but it's 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 just comment, right? So the only co the code starts here basically. Okay. So. So notice how simple. Well, it's relatively simple to uh, to input this in uh, in uh, in linear programming. That is, you just have to make the a matrix with the coefficients of the constraint and uh, a column of the right hand side of the constraint. Right? No, I'm sorry. No, this this actually this one is the the uh, coefficients of the objective function f. And B is the the, uh, the right hand side of the of the constraints. Okay. And keep in mind, this is these are these are columns, right? So this is this is how you write a column in MATLAB. It's column, column, and this this is a matrix three by three. In this case, I have three constraints and three um, variables. And notice, I don't have any x one positive, x two positive, x three positive, right? So those are those are separate. Those are not treated as real constraints. Um, okay, so and that's 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 it basically. So well, we'll see other um, a little bit more sophisticated way. But all you have to call is you have to call this uh, linear program linprog function, and you have to give the inputs the following. The objective function by just the coefficients of that linear function, right? Now, I'll, the reason you need a minus is because linprog actually minimizes instead of maximizing. So, the best way to the best way to see this is to look at the um, at the help here. So. Linprog actually minimizes the uh, objective function, which is linear, so f times x, but f f transpose, so f is a column, right? So f transpose is a row times the column of the x's. 
subject to, you can have inequality constraints, you can have equality constraints, and you can have bounds for x. Okay? So look at the syntax. So the first one is, is just the simple syntax where you have f, a, and b. So you have to specify f, the matrix coefficients, and the right-hand side of the constraints. Okay. So that's what we do here. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of output that you know the command uh, gives you, and you have to know how to uh, harvest this out output, how to get, you know. So we, uh, we actually give the name x, and x will stand for the vertex where the max optimal occurs. F val is going to be the value where of the uh, f objective function at the, ma at the optimal vertex. Uh, this doesn't matter too much. Uh, just going to say that it's successful. Optimization is, was successful. Um, and there are two more things. The one that we're going to be interested in is this lambda. It, has to, uh, it will be some sort of shadow prices. The, the role of a shadow price. And the last thing I do is notice that I don't display anything in this lin prog because I don't want to see everything yet, but I just display x and I display the value of the function. Now, because I'm maximizing f, I need to put minus f, and then the f max is minus f val. So I'm doing and undoing a sign so that, uh, so that in, in effect, I'm maximizing this. So if you run this, you'll just see. The, the, the answer, OK? It found the f max, and it found this vertex, or these values of x1, x2, x3. OK? So, Okay. Yeah. Um, how would you put a negative in front of the function because you know that you're uh, looking for a max and not a min? Right. If you weren't sure, would you just run the lin probe and see what the results were and then just just based on that? If you're not sure about what? Uh, no, Linprog always minimizes. But for our purposes, we're, always, we're, we're looking for the max. Well, for our purposes, we, we need to know what to look for before we go to the computer. So we're looking for the max. Now, if you're looking for a min, you can, you can ask for the min, right? Uh, but you will, you will know what the min is. you will know that it's 0, 0, right? In this case. But in general, it's, it's true. You won't know. In fact, in fact, uh, here, here uh, uh, by the way, I actually uh, typed in this, is I didn't, allow, I, I didn't say that x1, x2, x3 has to be positive, OK? So because I didn't, I didn't restrict to x1, x2, x3 is, is positive, you see what happens here. It actually goes to you know, negative values, and it doesn't find a negative, uh, uh, the minimum, right? So it gives me all of these uh, errors, which, which is consistent, right? It says that the minimum, right? Well, I call it what is the minimum, right? And at some point, it just has to stop. But so yeah, so you have to kind of watch what you're doing and kind of uh, balance with what you expect to, to happen. Now, um, let me talk a little bit about any other questions on this. It's just a one-line command, right? Yeah. I'm not really sure what x implies. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, so don't worry about these two things. Um, it doesn't, you see, I, I don't even use them. The only thing is, um, in order to 
to uh, to harvest this lambda, which is going to be the, the Lagrange multiplier, the shadow price, that's what the command asks you to, to do. So I have to give names. I cannot just I cannot just say lambda as a third output because that's not the third output. It's the fifth output. Yeah. So, but we don't use that. If you want to see what this is, and I run this again, you can. Uh, Oh. Right, one stands for it's successful or something like that, right? Um, okay, so now, so so you could say, okay, that's that's it. We're gonna plan this many acres and this many and so forth and be done. Um, now there is a uh, there is something that to be said about. Um, how far you are from actually fulfilling or satisfying those constraints. For instance, you might ask, um, well, have we used all, all the land? I mean, this optimal strategy, is it going to use all the land, or is it going to use all the water, or is it going to use all the, all the hours? Right? So how do, you, how do you decide on that? Well, you just have to see how far you are from... Uh, from satisfying the equalities in the constraints. Okay? So those are called slack variables, which is nothing but taking the AX and comparing it with B. Right? Remember the constraints are AX less than or equal than B. So if I put the difference, I will know, so the difference between the, uh, the left side and the right side of the constraints and equalities uh, turn out to be, for this, for this maximum, for this optimal value, turn out to be 0, 74, and 0. What does this mean? We use all the land, I and mean, forget this minus, it's 0. We use all the water, but we don't use all the time, which is great, right? Because we care about people more than water, for instance. Yeah? The question it talks about it wants one crop per plot and there are five plots per acres. I don't know if that like what's the number you got to the item per acre. This is kind of realistic, I guess. Because we had like 128 for corn. Right. Let me, okay, so one to, one to eight, yep. Yeah, so that's what you're using. So that'll take your front plot, and then we'll have another 8.86 acres left. We're going to use the maximization. Okay. So that's what you're using. 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 Okay, great. No, no, that's that's actually a good point. Uh, three, this, the the section that comes after this section is talks about revises these problems, but talks about you know you have uh, it's called discrete optimization. So you have uh, your your decision variables can only take discrete values, and then you have these other issues, right? But right now let's not let's not worry about those. In fact, uh, I'll I'll just say uh, discrete optimization is not going to be something we'll. We'll, we'll talk about uh, um, in this class. So, um, or integer integer programming, right? Integer programming is is a whole uh, different, you know, whole whole, whole different uh, discussion. Okay. So, um, so any, any, everybody kind of understands what the slack variables mean. Is once you you decide on the values of x one, x two, x three. What's the difference between the left side of the of the constraint and the right side of the constraint? Okay, um, and we just we just computed this, and the meaning of that is, you know, uh, the slack variable be, be, being zero means that the constraint is what's called binding. So you you have max that constraint. There is 
uh, nothing you know you can spare from that, right? You, you cannot have any. I mean, you cannot have uh, more land, right? For instance, yeah. Well, that basically means, if you think about that simplex, it means that um, where the maximum occurs, right, is somewhere where it's different from the where the labor is. So it's not on the face where the labor is uh, reaches its max. It reaches its, its constraint. Um, now, in in that's that's the the visual picture. But I mean, in terms of you know field, you know, situation on the field, um, that's what turns out to be the max maximum profit, right? As, t as uh, in terms of, um, in terms of, um, I mean, there's no cost to the labor here in the, in the, in the picture, but it just says that's what's going to give you the, uh, the best, um, the best decision for for these uh, for these variables. Is the difference? Is the difference right? Is the difference? Right. So so let me say here. So the sl the slack variables and I, I use u rather than x is is the following is uh, if I look at the constraints then I say 3x1 plus x2 plus 1.5x3 plus u1 equals a thousand so it's, it's basically I take the difference between the two and I, f I insert it there I like to be positive so I put plus u3 u1 right so I insert this u1 here the other one is 0 0.8 times x1 plus 0 0.2 x2 plus 0 0.3 x3 plus u2 equals 300 right and x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus u3 equals 625. So I have, for each constraint, I have a slack variable, right? And by requiring that these slack variables are also positive, means that I put them here, right? Plus x3, thank you, yeah. Okay, so when you do the difference between b and a times x, right, that's going to be u1, u2, u3, right? So u1, u2, u3, if you want a times x1, x2, x3 equals b b1, b2, b3, right? Okay? And it's important that the inequalities are all less than or equal to, less than or equal than, right? What if, what if one equality would be greater than or equal than? You would flip it around, put a negative in front, right? So put a negative in front uh, and type in that, that matrix. Maybe, maybe I'll show you an example in a second. Uh, okay, so this is the slack variables, and this has a meaning. And now um, the last thing is shadow prices. So we've talked about this. Um, let me just run this and then then talk. So, so this is actually... Uh, that's the reason why we wanted the lambda to be outputted. So we, we want to compute this uh, lambda. And lambda is like a complicated 
thing because it can it can also take the lambda of the constraints, equality constraints, and the uh, other things. So, so this is just saying, show me the values of the lambdas for the inequality constraints, which in this case are all of them. And these are the, these are those numbers. Okay. So what is the meaning of this? So if you think about lambda as a Lagrange multiplier or shadow price. For each of the constraints, so what's the, the, this is the first constraint, second constraint, third constraint. For the first constraint, what's the shadow price meaning? It means that if I allow one more unit of the irrigation of the water and redo the whole uh, optimization again, what will be the optimal profit in that case? And it's going to be $100 more. Okay? And that's because the optimal that occurred here was uh, using the, all the water. Okay? So because that constraint, the first constraint was binding, so the slack was zero there. Uh, corresponding to a positive value for the for the for the uh, for the uh, for the shadow price. Now think about the second constraint. The second constraint says I have some uh, hours to spare, right? Well, so now if I allow more hours and I redo the whole optimization again, is that going to change anything? No. So there's going to be no benefit right from in, for for increasing the other constraint for for relaxing the other cons the second constraint the third constraint was the amount of land right and that again corresponds to uh, if i allow one more acre and redo the the, the whole uh, optimization then what's going to happen right and you can convince yourselves of um, of this what's you can think of sensitivity analysis. So, if you run this uh, with 1001, 325, okay? You run the same thing again, and then look at the gain, the F max minus the previous one. This is going to be exactly the shadow price, the 100, okay? So that's and notice that here I'm not I'm not I'm not catching the the lambda again, right? I'm, I don't want to read that. Uh, also, so I can run this so you can see. Oh, the only thing that I'm gonna uh, so I okay I jumped over over something. So so let me just say the following that. Um, the first thing that we, we we ran this we ran it with what's called a large scale method, which is uh, typically used for large scale problems. Okay, and that is not using the simplex method that you know uh, by hand. If you've done it by hand, uh, that wasn't that wasn't the the actual simplex method. Okay, it was a different algorithm for this vertex search. If you want to use the simplex method that you, if you've done it by hand and you love it and you want to see how it does, then there is this, you have to define options, so just copy and paste this. And you see large scale off, simplex on, and then you run the same thing again, but you have to type it in here, right? Um, and when you type it in here, remember last time we only used three in inputs for the Limprog? Well, now you see we need... This will be for the equality constraints, and we don't have any equality constraints. This is for the lower bound, so the lower bound is zero, 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 right? And this is for the upper bound, and I forgot this one for what it is, but but you can look in the link for for that, and then run it again. Now, you remember those those numbers, right? Let's run it again with this with this uh, syntax with this. Um, Oh yeah, of course I 
Okay, let me run it again uh, from the beginning. So I run it here. This is a large scale, right? Okay. And this is the slack, and this is the shadow price. Okay. Now we do it with a simplex method. What do you notice? Different. Different strategy. Says don't plan any of the other one of the whatever the third crop, right? You're gonna get the same maximum. How is that possible? This basically means that your plane hits that simplex not in one point, one vertex alone, but on, but in edge at an edge, right? So there is there's not a single optimal value for x, right? Is the same value for f, same maximum for f, but there are at least two for, for x, right? And now here's the kicker here. Look at the slack. In this strategy, you, you have the same profit, but with less work to spare, right? Hours. So your people are going to work more, right? get the same profit. Right? So what's the conclusion of this? Depending on which, which, uh, which, method, which algorithm you use, sometimes you, you may pick a vertex, right? You may, you may reach a vertex where the maximum occurs, right? But that's it, you stop, right? And that's what simplex does. The other, the other algorithm actually does it a little bit better, it also maximizes the slack. Okay? And it's the same shadow price. That doesn't change, right? If it's binding, if it's a binding constraint, you have a a, a positive shadow price. If it's not binding, you have no shadow price, right? All right, so, so as I said, the sensitivity, and I'll, I'll stop here, but the sensitivity just show you that if you run this um, with one more, the gain is 100. So it's exactly that shadow price. Okay. So pretty much the lambda is the Lagrange multipliers for each of the constraints, taken one at a time at the maximum point. And if your optimal point is not on, on a constraint, you don't have a constraint optimization. So there's no lambda is zero. Okay? All right. There is a second exercise, uh, example 3.5, which I don't have a code to. Uh, but if you want, I can make it up. Uh, so there's an example 3.5 in the book about dirt, something like that. But um, maybe, maybe I'll post it one of these days. Okay, but get started on the homework and let me know. Uh, I think I set the deadline for Wednesday, so a week from today. So get that started. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't here on Monday, but I watched the I watched the class, mm -hmm. and you were asking about the uh, people taking it for graduate credit. Yeah. And I am taking it. For graduate yes, you are the only person. The other person, yeah. I'm the other person. Right? The other person, right? <laughs> so, so, so you wanted to. Uh, you mentioned you wanted to set up a time to. Yeah. Talk.